Welcome and thank you for joining us for the second half hour. The Factor on Censored against a little saucy. If your kids are still up, put their asses to sleep. Porn addiction continues to plague so many people. Some are actively seeking help for the addiction to porn more than any other issue. On average, there's more than 30,000 monthly searches for porn addiction treatment. People are looking for help. Texas currently places fourth in those searches nationwide. Joining us to talk about it is therapist Dr. Christine Belliard and sex expert Lady McCallan. So are you guys surprised that Texas ranks so high when it comes to porn? I'm surprised we're not number one, honestly, mm. like how repressed we are sexually. So yeah, that's not surprising at all. And you mean being repressed so you're quietly, secretly yes, on course, the computer or whatever you can do. Yeah. So the, the more um, the more people that are conservative, more conservative people actually do kinkier things than you would think. You would think that it was more people that dressed like me or that were more free spirited. No, the more conservative you are, the freakier you are. And why is that from it's, your perspective? I think it's taboo, right? Mm -hmm. It's the it's the taboo. It's the I shouldn't be doing this because I'm a good girl, good boy. So I'm going to do something out of the norm. That's exactly what it is. All right, Dr. Belliard, your thoughts about this? Is it is the church? Secretary doing flips. <laughs> well, I don't know splits. about that, but <laughs> what's interesting, the number one state is Utah. Mm -hmm. And so if you think Mormons about are. Mormons yeah. are freaky. Mormons are freaky. Yes. I will give you some stories on another day. You've on won your day. case now yeah. when yep. you said Utah. Right, but you bring up a good point yeah. with sexual repression. Mm -hmm. So some of this we can say porn addiction, but oftentimes it's important to think of this as out of control sexual behavior. Right. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, if you think about having an addiction, it's almost like a shame issue I so it is important to when you're thinking about porn addiction people are almost feeling like oh no I'm bad because like you're mentioning right. there's so many messages of I'm not supposed to do this exactly. this is wrong and so people oftentimes are struggling with something else and this is the symptom of it mm -hmm. so there may be an undiagnosed mental health disorder there may be an unresolved trauma where they really are just trying to get some type of relief and yeah. so it's more important to really concentrate on what function is this serving compared to you're an addict and just try not to do it anymore Mm -hmm. We know that doesn't work. And we heard from one of the biggest gospel stars in this country, mm -hmm. Kirk Franklin, who said he had That's to true. deal, it almost destroyed his life, his yeah. family, he, you know, and, and he almost lost everything as a result until he came and got the help he needed. It's real, and I think that's hopeful because some people feel like, oh no, this is something that's so private, so shameful, right. I can't even talk to anybody about this. There is help out there. There are trained sex therapists, couples therapists that really are used to working with these issues. Yeah, and that's what I do oh, mainly. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do a lot of things. And what do you see, Lady McCallan, out there? Because you're, you're so, deep in the trenches. I mean, honestly, like, and this, I have personal experience with this, right? Like, I have spanked a deacon and a pastor. I will just say that out there. So Say it one more time. So I have spanked a deacon and a pastor, and one of them was a very well-known one in the United States. Um, these people, they come to uh, sex workers and people like me that do, like, kink therapy and sex mm -hmm. therapy, and they want something that they are not getting from either their partner or their life. A lot of times it's and not it's about And it's not sex. because they can't get it, right. they're afraid to ask exactly. for they're it terrified or, or to shame. Ask for it. That's true. Yeah, it's shame. It's all shame, and this is all, like, and, and I don't even think porn is considered an uh, actual addiction yeah, yet, correct. but they're trying to get it labeled that, because it does the same chemical in your brain as it does with any other addiction. If it's if it's ruining your life, if it's hurting your lifestyle, then it's an addiction. Uh, it's so much repressed sexual taboo stuff that in the United States that we don't we don't talk about and we need to. I mean, for consumers of porn, the United States is the number one consumer of porn in the world. And we talk about it like we're ashamed of it. Everybody likes sex. Everybody likes getting freaky. They just don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the downside of that because we had Dr. Angela right. Jones here and she once told me, she said, Isaiah, one of my growing customer bases or client bases mm -hmm. is young males who are addicted to porn but now as a result of being addicted mm -hmm. to it, they can't perform in the real world because they have this fantasy and what they think is reality. And, and when they get to a real woman, you know, you might have a couple of inches. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> it's unrealistic expectations. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And I think this is really important to explore. If you think about it, we have almost no relationship education, period, None. for kids. So kids, even to adulthood, most of us had no course on this. And definitely the sex education that we got is, I mean, a joke. So it is important. The birds and the bees. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> right. They're not even getting the birds, let alone the bees. That okay. Part. So it is important to really have trustworthy spaces to, for people to actually process relationships, right. sex. Because if not, then all of the things that show up in the clinical rooms right. is real. And so so oftentimes people come so ashamed, but mm -hmm. not just those young men, their partners. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, because no, I have it, a lot of oh, couples yes. that come and they, they don't For like sure. having sex with each other anymore because they're like, we watch so much porn together and it, it doesn't feel like it does when we do it. And I'm like, that's because it's scripted, honey. This is, this is all a script that they've done. This is all, you know, you don't bleach your butthole. They do. This is not going to be something that you can that's emulate true. perfectly. That's look at you, your face. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Dr. Belly. No, but I'm you like, know what? Because what's happening for me, I'm being real with y'all. I can tell you go to church listen. every Sunday. I, You've been look, victimized look, look, out no. here. Long, I got to go to my church. No, y'all, no, this is helper. for real. I'm <laughs> used to talking about this in closed doors with no, clients. Y'all, yeah. right now, I am nervous. I never get nervous. No, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. But no, to me, it's, it's a parallel process. If I'm a therapist yeah. who's used to talking about this daily behind closed doors, right. imagine people trying to really process these things mm -hmm. in their relationships. Now, there are some people yeah. that watch porn together, but I'm talking about also the partner who feels like he doesn't want me. And so right. we have to think about how this affects mm -hmm. relationships where this is, it has caused people to lose their families. It has. And so it's important for us to really be able to open this space and I'm glad that we have. All right, Please. thank you guys. And if you need some help, yes. contact these two. Please. Still ahead tonight.